Hi, everyone. I'm George Wilson. I work in the uh, IBM Linux Technology Center on Linux on Power. My team's responsible for cryptographic optimization, secure boot kernel hardening, and uh, we're interested in booting the kernel directly for security reasons. Uh, you might recall that IBM developed Petty Boot, so we think directly booting the kernel is a good idea and have for quite some time. Um, we just started thinking about this, so standard disclaimer, uh, none of this may make it into a product. It's just uh, our point of view. So we're the weird platform. We're not UEFI. Uh, they are somewhat parallel universes, provide similar services. Um, and uh, I won't elaborate too much on it. I don't have a lot of time for the material that I have, but uh, uh, one of the most important things here is that uh, you know, we, uh, we have this device tree and we have uh, handover via a client program uh, is what it's called. So we did have Petty Boot on open power systems, but we only recently started considering Secure Boot for uh, our virtualized servers. Um, so our servers um, run a type one hypervisor and they present these logical partitions that um, uh, run open firmware, right? So a little different environment than what most people are talking about here. Uh, the whole stack uh, of the firmware is signed and verified, and then uh, uh, we hand control over to the operating system uh, by uh, executing uh, this uh, client program. Um, the, um, the, the firmware searches for the, uh, uh, for a, a prep partition, we call it, um, which is basically a bare partition that has an ELF binary in it. And um, in practice, we think, so uh, since we haven't experimented with it, and I wish that I had been able to do more experimentation before uh, I actually got here, but um, we should be able to boot a 64-bit uh, little Indian ELF directly uh, given the proper uh, ELF headers on it. And um, the, so all of this is documented in the, uh, uh, the PAPR, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the document that, 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 that talks about how our, our platform works. And um, booting PEs might actually be possible. Uh, which was a little surprising. I hadn't, hadn't read that detail in the paper before. Our bootloader team doesn't think that's actually implemented and supported, but it might be interesting because we may want to do uh, uh, you know, common tooling across various architectures and have a common experience. Um, we may or may not need a stub bootloader depending on, on how, how this is implemented. If, if we take Leonard's approach, we would need a stub bootloader. So. So uh, one consideration is image size. So um, um, the uh, real base and load base open firmware variables have to be configured properly. This should be settable via ELF notes. Our firmware team reports that uh, this has been tried in the past uh, unsuccessfully. So we need to do some experimentation here, uh, determine whether that actually works, and if it doesn't, figure out what we need to do to rectify that. Uh, one of the biggest obstacles in, in why we didn't just take Petty Boot and pop it down into a prep partition to do Secure Boot uh, already is uh, we have this thing called uh, Client Architecture Support Negotiation. So the uh, firmware and the client program exchange information on their characteristics. Um, when, um, mainly when the kernel comes up, um, uh, there's a little negotiation done in Grub for claiming memory, which has been problematic uh, uh, for us, <laughs> as uh, Daniel's probably aware. Uh, but um, most of the properties are negotiated in the prominent uh, .c in the kernel. Um, and uh, this presents a problem because anything that affects a device tree provokes a reboot. So we can pass the device tree back up to the kernel and um, so when we boot a secondary kernel, that's going to go renegotiate. And if it doesn't have the same characteristics as the original kernel, it'll renegotiate, provoke a reboot, boot back into the first kernel, right? So we need to do something else. Uh, internally, we proposed adding a new uh, runtime abstraction services call that would actually go do this cast negotiation on behalf 
of the kernel, pass the device tree back, and resume execution uh, after the R task call. So this is fixable, but this, this is definitely development we would have to do. Uh, so there, there are three different cases of booting. Um, the first is boot from disk. And um, um, right now, the, the prep partition uh, is sized at about 10 meg is the largest. So that's going to be uh, a problem unless it's you know, increased in size during installation. Um, interestingly enough, and this is another thing that I didn't realize until I was reading the, the paper uh, for this talk, um, but um, that might well be supported. Uh, and our uh, partition firmware team reports that uh, FAT16 should be supported in there, so we might be able to have the equivalent of an ESP uh, for our platform. And this would be a lot better uh, even for just uh, booting up a kernel because um, right now we have the issue that we have to zeroize the prep partition so we don't have stray signatures that may be lying out on the prep partition when we, we do a, a reinstallation of the, uh, the core.elf. Uh, so that's, that's one consideration there. Uh, boot from network is interesting. Uh, it follows the old RFC uh, 1350, so it's limited in size uh, uh, to about uh, 32 meg, and this is a problem for the init RAM FS now. So now what we do is go fetch grub, which then subsequently fetches um, um, uh, the uh, kernel in the init RAM FS. And uh, so if we're going to boot this composite image that's even larger, we're going to have to solve this problem one way or the other. Um, uh, and uh, very likely that's going to mean implementing uh, HTTPS uh, as an alternative. Uh, and uh, there's been some discussion of doing that internally. Um, we also boot from ISO, shouldn't present any extraordinary problems, but it has uh, for Grub caused the manifestation of the, uh, the RMA uh, boot memory issues, so we, we actually do need to test that. Um, so then uh, how do we do um, device discovery? So we can present a menu of devices. It has these open firmware names, they're funny names, right? But you can actually go do device selection. But one thing Pettyboot had was a discovery mechanism that would discover bootable images for you and present you with a nice menu. You know, how would we go about doing that uh, for both the, the initial kernel and the, the KXX uh, cases? Um, you know, once again, how do you edit the kernel command line in some reasonable way that preserves security when you need to do that? And what about other operating systems? Like, you know, we can still boot uh, FreeBSD on, on uh, Power LPARs. Uh, and would we support chain loading somehow or another? Uh, uh, just some, some considerations there. So uh, we also support a form of secure boot. Right now it's a static key-based secure boot. Uh, we are attempting to get uh, patches <laughs> upstream to uh, actually do key management on it um, in, a, in a nicer way. Uh, but one of the problems is, you know, how do we handle out-of-tree modules if we have the signed composite image? Uh, and uh, I know Leonard was talking about, um, you know, having uh, auxiliary module sidecars, I think you called them. And um, uh, our problem is this needs to work for the network boot case. And uh, we would only have the capability of booting this single system image right now uh, unless we augmented our, our uh, network boot uh, to support uh, uh, transporting some partition uh, data along with it. So. Um, maybe the signed auxiliary components could be appended to the end of the image. I don't know. This is something that we, we need to think about because we need to support network boot as well. Um, we need to understand how we're going to apply our existing uh, two-level authenticated variable scheme. We, we modeled it loosely on, on UEFI, but it, it's not the same as UEFI. We don't have a, a shim. We don't have a mock. We do not sign anything. We, we don't get Microsoft to sign anything. It's up to distributions or administrators to sign their own bits. And that was deliberate. Uh, we, we, we wanted to put the, hand, the, 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 the control in the hands of the administrator, not, not in our hands. And uh, we will want to support SBAT. And we think this is very important to keep from having to deal with a large number of, uh, of hashes or, or certificate uh, revocations. Uh, for trusted boot, uh, we would like that the PCR semantics would be preserved, uh, the existing ones. 
um, uh, for uh, sealing and attestation purposes. And then we have the problem of infinite logs across uh, K execs. Uh, they, uh, uh, the uh, uh, I'm a log, for instance, gets passed along in purgatory across K execs, and you, uh, you end up with this ever extending log problem uh, so that uh, the, the log and the PCRs uh, match up. Uh, maybe it's not a, much of a problem in practice because people aren't generally booting huge chains of kernels, but it is a consideration. Um, and uh, we only support SRTM boots. We do not support DRTM. So using DRTM to uh, affect a new environment is not an option right now. And were we to implement it, it would likely look like something other than just an ISA extension like it does on, on uh, 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 x86 and, and ARM. Uh, we also need to consider how this might affect our live partition mobility since we are a fully virtualized platform. Our partitions can migrate uh, across systems um, for uh, uh, lots of different purposes. So from our perspective, um, and, and here I am you know, caught between uh, Marta and, and Leonard, um, we think that the distros need to agree on a common standard boot mechanism. Um, and um, we, uh, you know, we think that's a very important characteristic here, that the experience be similar uh, uh, across distros and, and across uh, architectures. And in the interim, we need to continue to support Grub, and that's probably going to be a very long time that we're going to have to support that. So, you know, I, you know, just want to extend a hand and say, what can we do to help that situation? You know, because, you know, we we'd, we'd like our secure boot patches accepted. Yes, I know. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so, um, anyway, a few references here, and uh, with that, uh, thank you. Any, any questions? Peter, as usual. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, You're welcome. So, so regarding the slide where there was the RTM, just mm -hmm. just a couple of corrections. Um, so for x86, is the ISA uh, stuff or close to ISA stuff plus some? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for ARM, there are two ways. There is trust zone and the ISA stuff that will uh, come probably in future. And for the, uh, for the Power 9, we did analysis and presentation even of the, of the host boot uh, preliminary implementation of uh, the RTM. So you already have something there. We do. It looks like a memory preserving IPL for us, essentially. So, okay. But, it, but it, it, it takes a long time to do that. It's not like a, you know, an instant sort of thing, right? It, it, it takes a little while to, to go through it. But we never actually implemented it fully. Okay. So it is a possibility, but we never implemented it. I just wanted to let everyone know that there is some uh, interest about that in community. And on TPM Dev conference, I don't know which year, there was presentation about that explaining precisely what's in code. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I missed maybe, uh, is it, it's not using the EFI stub no. for the kernel? No, there's no EFI involved. And so it's passing device tree to Linux yes. on all architectures? Yes, 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 directly. OK. And, and, and people ask, why, why don't we just switch to UEFI? And it's because we have to support AIX and IBM I on the same platform, so we can't just get rid of those operating systems. I wouldn't ever ask that. <laughs> Other people, maybe. Other people have asked that. So. <laughs> Any other questions? No, I think. Comments? Okay. Thank you for that. So I, I usually use the only the device tree, actually. So the, but the, yeah, open firmware supports the many, uh, some function and the components. So the, I have a, uh, I want to a question about the, uh, do you think that the high quality, comp high priority component with uh, your opinion? So the uh, secure boot or some blah, 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 many components. So which 
high priority component, do you think? What, is the question, what's the highest priority component? Uh, it, it means that the open firmware has uh, many components. Yes, yes, yes. So the, yeah, uh, it's difficult to uh, maintain uh, uh, same priority each component in my thinking. So the, uh, if uh, I uh, contribute to the, some project, so the, uh, which uh, handle start up the components. I don't know the, the extent to which we're actually adopting external contributions to our yeah. implementation right now. So. Uh, uh, I think you have, uh, okay, uh, sorry for that. Uh, uh, no, I might, I might need to talk to you out in the hallway to actually uh, get your question there. Comments, questions, suggestions? No. Thank you for your right. presentation. Thank you very much. Okay.